All right, so now that we've done a lot of work with uh, evaluating exponents, evaluating exponential expressions, we've brought in the properties of exponents, which have really helped us to, to kind of uh, simplify this process. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about uh, the last type of exponent. We're going to talk about negative exponents. We've talked about negative bases uh, and, we've, and, and what that kind of does to our problem. But we haven't talked about negative exponents. So we're kind of putting everything together. This is the end of Chapter 2. Chapter 2 is all about integers. Now we're going to talk about integers that are exponents, so um, positive and negative. Uh, so for this, let's examine the question. What happens when I do 2 to the 3rd divided by 2 to the 5th? Let's go ahead and uh, rewrite this here on your paper. So I've got 2 to the 3rd divided by 2 to the 5th. Now notice, that's 2 to the 3 minus 5, right? I've got the same base. I'm dividing. But I don't know how to do 2 to the negative 2. Well, to do that, let's take a look at this. Let's actually write this as a fraction. I'm going to write 2 to the 3rd divided by 2 to the 5th. When I evaluate that, I get 8 over 32 which notice, 8 divided by 32 is not 4, it's 1 fourth. Notice I did not get a negative number because I had a negative exponent. I got a small number. And by small numbers, we mean decimals and fractions. Although decimals and fractions don't necessarily have to be small. But smaller than 1, bigger than 0. So this is not, a lot of people think, hey, negative exponent, that's going to be a negative number. Not necessarily. Let's take a look at this. Let's talk about how we would evaluate this. Well, I can rewrite 1 fourth as 1 over 2 squared, right? Because 4 is 2 to the second power. So think about what I could have done here. Instead of writing that out as a fraction, I could have taken 2 to the negative 2 and flipped that, made it its reciprocal. That's what negative exponents do. So it becomes 1 over 2 squared, which then becomes 1 over 2. To uh, 1 over 4. Okay? Um, so negative exponents, we'll evaluate these in a second here in our next example. Negative exponents, they don't create negative number, they don't create negative numbers. Uh, they create uh, fractions. So basically, when you have a negative exponent, you flip that and it becomes 1 over the base raised to the power you're given. More on that in a second. So let's think about real quickly, what is the only way to get a negative answer when dealing with exponents? Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the exponent. Because remember, exponent just tells you how many times to multiply the number. The only way to get a negative answer when dealing with exponent is to have a negative base. And even then, remember, if it's, a, if it's an even number of exponents, or an even exponent, you're going to have an even number of bases. It's going to cancel out the negative, right? So you have to have a negative base with an odd number of exponents or an odd exponent. So let's take a look at then, let's dig deeper into the, um, the negative exponent. This is just going to give you real surface level. Uh, you're going to master this through your practicing it though. So it might not come very, it might not come as quickly as you'd like, but we'll get it through practicing it. So here I've got 5 to the negative 3. First thing that I have to think to myself is, hey, I, I don't know how to multiply 5 by itself a negative number of times. So I've got to get rid of the negative exponent. Well, the way we do that, negative exponent tells us to flip 5 to the negative 3, put that in the denominator, so get the reciprocal. This is 1 over 5 cubed. Well, 1 over 5 cubed is 1 over 125. Not 125, not negative 125, all right? 8, over, 8 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 8 squared, which is 1 over 64. Notice again, answer is not negative because the base is not negative. All right. That's just very brief, uh, very quick. Let's let's look. Let's tie this together then with uh, what we learned with properties of exponents. Notice I've got the same base on letter a. I'm multiplying, so I'm going to add the exponents together. Two to the negative five plus three is two to the negative two. Well, remember that negative. I got to get rid of that, so that's going to be one over two squared. One over two squared is one fourth. All right, in the next one. I've got the same base, but notice I'm dividing. Dividing means I'm going to subtract these exponents. Well, 5 minus 8 is negative 3. That's going to be 1 over 6 to the third. Notice all these steps. This is four lines. The subtraction, and then showing what that subtraction equals, 
then uh, doing the reciprocal, and notice I'll pull up a calculator to do 6 to the third, it's 216. So it's 1, 216. All right, letter C, I'm adding negative 6 plus 7. Notice that's 7 to the first. I do not always flip. Remember, if it's a positive exponent, we just go as usual. Some people get in a rhythm here, and they forget, and they just flip everything. But that's not necessarily the case. All right, let's take a look at a negative base. It says negative 3 ends up being negative 3 to the negative 3. I subtract because I'm dividing. Notice I have to keep that flipping this does not get rid of the negative sign on the base. It only gets rid of the negative sign on the, on the exponent. So in the denominator, I'm evaluating negative 3 cubed. Well, that's going to be negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. Positive 9 times negative 3 is negative 27. So notice my answer here is negative 127. That's the only way I can get a negative answer is by having a negative base. So for your quick check underneath, you've got a couple of problems here. Uh, go ahead and try these. Again, it might not come automatically, um, but uh, give it a shot and we'll work on it together if you're having trouble. Good luck.